name is Anne McFarlane. I'm the Professor of Primary Healthcare Research here at the Graduate Entry Medical School in the University of Limerick. Yeah, it's really important that we do have a, a good functioning primary healthcare system because there's um, sufficient evidence that having a good healthcare, primary healthcare system has a very positive impact on population health. Um, we know that the vast majority of illness experiences are treated in community or at the level of primary care, so an awful lot of illness never reaches, for example, hospital settings. Um, so the, the issue then of how the services are organised in the community, how they're delivered to patients and people using the services is is extremely important and the vision I suppose in behind primary care is that people can access services um, when they need them, that they are responsive to their needs and um, that the professionals working in primary care are connected with each other, that there's a, a you know um, a good coordination of care, good continuity of care so that the patient and the patient's family aren't uh, bamboozled or that their illness experience isn't made worse by being in touch with the healthcare system, if you see what I mean. Um, so in terms of this specific piece of research, then our view would be, well, if we can understand a lot more about primary care teams as they currently are functioning, we can look at identifying some solutions and some issues, ways of improving primary care team working so that ideally when patients and service users <coughs> interact with primary health care that they are meeting professionals from different disciplines who can communicate together well, who can refer uh, b between each other um, in a timely and efficient manner um, and that all of that would enhance the patient and service users experience um, and improve their health care. Yeah, we're really excited about this new award from the Health Research Board. It's a grant to study uh, the reform uh, processes in primary care. Um, so there was a big strategy in 2001 which uh, set out a vision for primary care in Ireland that there would be primary care teams all over the country um, bringing professionals from a whole range of disciplines and backgrounds together to provide very coordinated and, and, and continuous care for people living in the community and their families. Um, the implementation of that strategy has been very challenging. There has been some very significant progress and there are primary care teams around the country. But there are a lot of questions about how well the teams are functioning. Um, there are a lot of challenges with GP participation in the teams. Um, one of the visions behind the strategy was that communities would have a, a very real engagement with primary care teams. There's been some exciting innovation around that, but it has been hard to sustain it in a meaningful way. So we have the situation where the system has been reformed over a 10 or more year period, um, but there's still an awful lot of things we don't fully understand about what's working very well and what are the main challenges. And certainly there's a common and widely held view that primary care team uh, development could be further on than it currently is. Well, I think the impact is, of the study is, is likely to be high because when you introduce new policy into healthcare setting, it's really important that you study what happens next. Um, and there have been studies around the country, small pieces of work that have investigated some element of primary care reform or primary care team working. But there has been no major piece which has um, you know, been very comprehensive in its scope and um, that has engaged all of the stakeholders together in the investigation. Um, and you know, this, this piece of research is designed to address that gap in knowledge. So we see it as being an important piece of research that will be relevant to um, communities on the ground providers in primary care and also to, to policy makers who want to understand well, what, hap what happened next with the policy and, and what, were the, what are the factors that we need to improve. This new project will run for three years um, and it's a qualitative uh, health research project. Yeah, there are a number of different collaborators involved in the project and um, we're glad that they've been involved since the beginning and, and worked with us through the development of the proposal. Um, we have a collaboration from um, a community organisation here in Limerick City, that's the Paul Partnership, and they have really extensive experience of primary healthcare community projects. Um, we also are collaborating with the HSE and with the Department of Health and Children. We're very pleased as well that um, clinicians and, and um, therapists who are working in primary care settings are, were involved with the proposal. So, for example, uh, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, GPs, practice nurses um, have all contributed to the development of this proposal and will we'll stay involved, hopefully, as the work goes on. Um, and finally, we have collaboration from academic colleagues in the University of Southampton in the UK. Um, in terms of what makes for good collaboration, I think it's important that there's an honesty in it and that people understand why they're being asked to get involved in something at a particular point in time, that people's expertise and perspective is genuinely valued, um, and that 
I think what I've seen in a lot of collaborations, it's really important that everybody works hard to understand what, that different people have different needs based on what organisation or setting they're coming from. And I think if all of those things happen, uh, in my experience, you can have really positive and productive collaboration. If I think of what, what would make this project successful is that we'll hold on to the engagement that, that we've started with key stakeholders in the community, in the HSE and in uh, the Department of Health and Children and that they stay involved and they stay informed in the research and that's, that's part of our job to make sure that happens. The final part of the research ask, actually asks those very stakeholders to come together and to look at the findings that have been com that will be coming out of the research and to help us to analyse and interpret the findings and to help us as academics to draw up recommendations for policy. So for me, if I'm looking forward to three years' time, that would be a real marker of success that we have that engagement and collaboration about that very important issue.